Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today um, I thought we'd see if we could um, tackle a little issue with the um, Acorn Electron we've got. Um, I mean I've shown the problem that this has got um, in the previous video we did on this. Oops, kick, don't kick my, kick my um, camera tripod. Right, um, essentially the computer is in really nice condition. It's in basically in really good working order. Um, it's I assume it's not had any caps or anything um, done it. I don't think Andy said he'd changed any caps in it. I think the only thing he um, did to this was um, I think there was a couple of keys that didn't work at all and he got some new um, key switches for them and replaced them. And I know he's done the colour composite mod on it but apart from that I don't think he's actually done anything really to the computer. Um, the one thing that was wrong with it is uh, this shift key here. Um, now it does work, but it's it's not good. Um, and it is I've, the more I've basically I've been playing with this thing over the last couple of weeks, and I do quite like um, using it just for its really nice compact size. Even to the point where I am considering buying one of the um, Elk SD um, cartridges for it, so I can load software from um, an SD card. I will. I will have to save up for one for because they're around about the sixty pound mark, and I don't have sixty pound to uh, throw away on anything like that at the moment. But um, I am umming and eyeing about possibly actually um, getting one of those. Um, but um, one thing I found which is really irritating is this um, dodgy shift key. Basically, um, like I say, it does work, but you have to if you just press shift and. Um, like your quote marks, you're just getting the two, as you can see there. Okay, I'll just see if I can zoom you in a little bit. Oops. In we go. There we go. Give you a good idea. So you know, essentially, you can't even see where my fingers are now, can you? Oop. Essentially, if you just press the shift down like that and um, like press the two for the quote marks, it's not working at all. You have to really, you basically have to press the key in the top corner there, really hold it down, and then it will work. As where if you know, try the other shift key, just touch that, and it works first time. And really, it's the key that's going to get the most wear. If you think most software, when you're loading it, what you all you're going to really be doing is typing. Um, you obviously can see me. Um, basically all you're going to be doing is typing chain double quotation marks for a lot of your software and because that shift key is closest to the um, quotation marks you know, it's just a standard thing to think hold that down press your double quotation marks so it's one of the keys that's going to wear out first basically so like I said what we saw, I thought we'd do in this video just um, a quick video basically we're going to take that um, shift key out um, we'll see if we can clean it up I'll see if I've got any of these key switches but uh, I have a feeling they're the same as used on a BBC Micro in which case I've got a good chance I've probably got some spare somewhere but before we go using up some of my um, well dwindling um, spares on things like key switches we'll see if we can clean it up if we can clean it up well enough what we might do is actually swap the key switch with the other shift key over there because that one will have not had anywhere near as much wear on it as that key there so like I said we can get it to a functional state what we'll probably do is actually reinstate it but we'll reinstate it and replace it with the key switch over there um, so what I'll do is I'll just quickly pause the video I'll get us set up on um, the bench and we'll um, crack into this thing and um, see if we can sort those um, sort that key switch out so back in a sec Okay, we're all set up to do this, and as you may have noticed, we're actually still in my office. Um, I've actually um, got a friend of mine's um, radio in for, that I'm doing a restring on for him, and it's currently spread all over my um, normal workbench. But for a simple procedure like this, we really don't need anything fancy, and I'm going to use basically dead simple tools for this. So we've got very simple soldering iron. Um, about 25 watts. Quite a small tip, but um, like I say, it's not a big iron or anything. In fact, we'll just give that a clean and a tin while we're uh, while we're getting started. Because I'm not used this iron for a while. So we'll just tin the end up. This is um, vintage 1960s um, soldering iron, but so it's perfectly adequate for what we're going to be doing. 
we'll just get that tinned up and that can go out of the way there. Um, apart from that, obviously got some solder, got a um, multimeter here, I've got some pliers, solder sucker and a screwdriver. So uh, without further ado, let's um, let's get inside this um, electron. I've just noticed actually we do have a missing um, a missing foot there. I'll have to have a look through my um, little rubber feet and see if I've got one I can replace that with. Get the screws out. Just four screws in the bottom of one of these, so they're. Uh, they're quite easy to get into. There we go. There's the four screws out. Flip it back over. Now one one thing I will say with these, um, and I'm guessing this is going to be in the same as um, same as the other two. You have basically a ribbon cable connecting the uh, keyboard um, to the main board, and they are not suffer. They are um, not aging well, shall we say it that way? So you have to be super, super careful um, actually taking the keyboard off. Basically, we lift it up. Um, this here's the um, the ribbon that we're talking about here, and basically whatever you do don't pull on the ribbon um, there's a little connector at the end of it and make sure whatever you do you pull on the connector not on the ribbon just ease that out and we can just lift we'll lift the keyboard off and we'll just have a quick look at the uh, quick look at the main board and that's looking in really really super nice condition um, it doesn't appear to have had any cap work done on it we may want to um, possibly do a recap on this. There's not very many. There's uh, one, two, three. We've got four um, capacitors, which I'm pretty sure will be used for um, DC smoothing. Um, we have a separate switch mode power supply. If you know the Acorn Electron, basically um, you've got um, 18 volts AC um, input to the um, Electron there. And then we have a, um, a switch mode power supply, a very basic switch mode power supply here, which takes in the 18 volts and um, converts it to DC and obviously drops it down to the um, minus 5 volts and plus 5 volts that the um, electron needs. So we've got, again, this. Uh, there's only three capacitors on here which really could cause, well, four, sorry, four capacitors on here which could really, um, oh no, there's a few more. Uh, we've got a large uh, 35 volt, um, I think that's 3000 UF or um, 3500 UF um, smoothing capacitor there. That's probably absolutely fine actually. Um, we've got a little um, electrolytic there, what's that? Um, 22 UF. Um, we've got a 470 there and a 10 UF there. We've got, um, let's see which, what that is there. We've got a 47 there, and we've got, I think that's a 1000 uh, UF there. Now, if all the voltage is coming off the, in fact we can test that. Now, let's test that before we go any further. Just while, just while we're in here, um, let's make sure that the voltage is coming off that power supply or um, within spec. Let me grab the... Um, AC power lead. I wasn't planning on doing this in this video, but seeing we're in here, we may as well. I'll plug this back in. Unplug that. So I've got the main um, electron power supply plugged in here. We'll plug that in. I presume it's not beeping because it's not got the um, keyboard click connected, but I certainly heard the um, relay click in it, so I think we're okay. Um, we'll set the multitester to the 20 volts range. We'll switch that on. 
hopefully you should be able to see that if I put that if I put that there can you see the um, readings on it right let's have a look here now so we can see that we've got um, zero volts in the center there so we just um, connect on zero volts and we'll try plus five oops slipped off them but um, 5.02 that's absolutely spot on and 4.98 for the minus 5 volts that's that's good I mean um, you can't get much closer than that really so I'm um, to be honest I'm not even going to worry about the um, power the electrolytic capacitors on the actual um, power supply board there I don't think there's going to be any issue it may be a, some advantage possible to change those for um, there but again I don't I might it's one of these if I was selling this Acorn on to someone I'd probably change those capacitors just for peace of mind just because I don't want it you know them contacting me in six months time telling me you know something's gone wrong and it's just a bad cap for the few pounds that it costs to replace them capacitors like I say if this was a computer I was passing on to someone or selling you know putting on eBay or something like that I would probably change those capacitors um, because this is one that's going to stay in my collection like I said um, I'll probably leave those as are, as is for the time being I may come in here and um, just check them on an ESR meter and just make sure they are happy but judging by the voltages coming off of the DC to DC conversion the power supply there like I said I'm not worrying about any of these those um, voltages look uh, really good I said apart from that this board it just looks in um, decent condition it's not dirty um, doesn't look like there's any signs of corrosion it even appears to have some for they basically if you've not seen inside um, an electron before essentially like I say, it's a slightly cut down BBC um, model uh, BBC micro but most of the glue logic um, used is all condensed down to that chip there that's the basically the ULA the um, Acon Electron ULA and I think yeah even like the video chip um, everything like that is condensed down into that um, ULA there so everything that um, deals with the CPU the memory um, sound everything like that is all in that one chip rather than the many many chips you'll find in um, the BBC Micro so we literally do have the ULA some RAM down here um, the ROM the CPU and a little bit of glue logic here and that's really all there is in one of these like I said they really did manage to reduce everything right down in the um, electron like I said unfortunately they had to do some compromises and basically they did compromise on the design that's why um, the electron can't run all the um, BBC micro software because it is missing some of the um, video standards that the um, BBC could um, actually output this can't do it anyway we're going to put this to one side and let's have a look at the um, keyboard which is the actual main part of this um, this video we've got the keyboard here um, made by Aztec like I said these are good keyboards um, but you know they are old now when, were these, when did these come out 82 83 um, so like I said they've got some age to them these keyboards um, and keys are starting to fail on them now um, one this is what I was saying about before basically you have to be incredibly careful with this uh, ribbon cable over the years they've actually started to um, delaminate it's not quite like the cable on um, like a spectrum it's not just um, like a printed ink on plastic which makes up the um, traces this is actually copper they're actual proper copper traces that are like encapsulated in plastic and what's happened over the years is the plastics delaminated so all these copper traces are basically just loose inside the plastic uh, I've seen this on other computers I've actually got a, um, a video genie um, which is um, an original Tandy TRS-80 clone I've got one of them up in the attic and one of the cables in that has done exactly the same thing um, what I think we're going to have to do, we'll have to get this out of the case and then we can actually address the um, 
the key which is causing us some issues. I'm just going to have to be super, super careful, like I said, around that um, that ribbon there. I mean, I suppose it wouldn't be the end if that did fail. I'm sure we could come with a come up with a workaround for it. But um, it should be okay, providing we are um, just careful. Case out of the way, and we've just got the keyboard to uh, we've just got the keyboard to work on. A little bit of a uh, bit of fluff in there that we can get rid of. And get that out. Now I've wondered if Andy, when Andy worked on this, didn't actually um, take take the keyboard out. I wonder if he worked on it from the top there. Well, let's get that out of the way. Let's spin the keyboard back over. So it's that shift key there, which is like I said, the one that's causing those issues. So first things first, let's get the keycap off it. Yeah, just pull off. There's a bit of fluff, a bit of fluff around there. Now let's see if we can get that um, keycap dissolved. And unfortunately, there's like a foam pad. Take that tape off. I'm guessing Andy might have stuck that on to insulate it. Isolate it, sorry. So it's right underneath there. So we're going to have to see if we can get this uh, this foam off. Now, let's. Oh, actually, we might be able to just roll it off with our fingers. Yeah, I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to peel peel this foam off so we can get to that key switch there we go and we'll replace that with something else when we, um, when we put this computer back together Foam in it is actually starting to degrade anyway, so um, it's probably as well we get it out now. Otherwise, what'll happen over the years is that foam will just basically turn to dust, and it'll just end up all over the inside of the um, computer. So if we can get it off now, then um, we don't have to worry about it later, and we can replace that with something else just to isolate anything touching that bit of the board. don't even think I need to use um, isopropyl or anything to get this off. I can literally just roll it off with my finger. We'll probably just have a quick clean round after we've finished with a bit of um, IPA anyway. Just to get rid of our solder residue and everything. And that will get rid of... Just blow that off. That will get rid of any remains of that anyway. Right, there we go. So we're in. And it's those two contacts there that we need to desolder. We'll go in with the um, the solder now. Let's clean the tip. And we just want to add a little bit of fresh solder to start with. An old, just good old fashioned manual desoldering pump here. Just heat up. We'll probably just go over those again. go. 
to get the pliers and just give them legs a little whittle make sure that they're, they're broke off free there we go just felt them both break free so those are loose and hopefully we can extract that um, key switch and turn the board back over let's see if we can get this key switch out of the actual keyboard now I'm hoping I can do this without having to actually dismantle the whole entire keyboard we should be able to just push those little arms in and basically now that the solder is free that's that side up back down again and basically push in them little um, tabs at either side and we should be able to lift the um, lift the key up I wonder if I can get them with these there we go just like that so let me get you zoomed in Come on, in you come. Let's get you down so you can actually see what we're working on. Right there he is. So that is the um, that there is the defective key. Now what we'll do is we'll get the we'll get the meter in and we'll set that to ohms. Hopefully you can see the. Uh, the reading on that. Can you see that? And what we're going to do, we'll just put that across the um, keys, the key switch, and we'll measure. So we can see. I've just. Oops, hang on. Let me zoom you out a little bit. There, that's better. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, hopefully you will be able to. I've we'll put that across the key switch now. Oops. It's rather difficult to get it on the contacts and not touch the metalwork so you get a true um, a true reading, but I press that in now. You have to really, really jab on it to be able to get it to connect properly and we're still showing you know 15, 16, 13. We're not getting it right down to one or two ohms, put it that way. Uh, and that's with me pressing the key so hard it's um, oh, it's left an indentation in the end of my finger so we've definitely got um, a nippy key switch there so let's see if we can fix it now we should be able to pop the back off this key just by lifting these tabs up if I remember correctly I think you can get these keys apart. you can't. You've maybe actually sealed. Yeah, because that's not. I was. I always thought you could get these apart, you know, and um, clean the insides out. Well, if you can't, I wonder if we can get a little bit. Now we've got the key out. I wonder if we can get a little bit of um, IPA down into the actual key. I think we'll try that and see if we can clean it out that way. Basically we've got a cotton bud here and I've absolutely soaked it in IPA. And I'm going to see if I can just get that. Yeah, we could use some, in fact I might go and get some switch cleaner and we'll just try and squirt some um, squirt some switch, switch 
cleaner into it and see if that will um, that will help. So I, was, I always thought you could get those keys um, apart easily enough. I'm sure I have done with the BBC Micro ones, so perhaps they're slightly different. I've definitely managed to get a little bit of the IPA to um, whip down inside that key anyway, so let's give it a, a couple of good plays like that. And we'll see what um, happens when we we'll put it on the meter. Even I don't even think we're getting anything there at all now. Yeah, the meter's working. Well, it's better. I'm, I'm. In fact, that's a lot better. I'm just pressing the key normally there now. As you can see, it's going right down to one ohm. Yeah, look at that. Every time now. Point something of an ohm. One ohm. Anything around one ohm, two ohms is going to be absolutely fine. It's when you get into the 20, 30 ohms, you know, you're going to um, start having problems. That's... Because I'm not even pressing that key in very hard now. And that's working fine. And all we've done is drip a little bit of um, IPA in down there. So what I'm going to do I'm going to pop that key out there Oops. yeah I'm going to pop that key out there we'll install that key we've just cleaned up in that position we'll put that one which I know works perfectly in fact we'll test once we've got it out we'll just give a quick test on it um, a quick test on it just to see what how many um, ohms that's taking but I think this key like I said in the long term will be a better um, a better replacement and we can put that repaired key here which where it's not going to get used anywhere near as much break free so that's ready to come out I should have really taken the uh, key cap off first let's we'll pop the key, key cap off fortunately come off really really easy on these and again we'll just try gripping the uh, key cap with these kneel it just make sure that those are definitely free that one is, I think that one is just holding on with a little bit of solder so we'll just go in and um, try and release that one again try that one more time there we go, let's try that again
not quite as easy on this one because I can't get in like I did on the other one just to help get it out so we'd have to take the whole keyboard apart I'd rather not do where are my other uh, what's my other pair of pliers that I had what have I done with them let's just give that one more try like this and then I'll have to go and see if we can find something else just to help Oh, so close. See, what you need is you need some pl long nose pliers you can press both sides in but are narrow enough to fit into these two little grooves at either side of the key. So the key is actually loose there. I'm just not quite... Um, I can push... Ah, there we go. Got it. So that's the key out. Like I said, literally, there's two little tabs at either side. Sorry, you can't see what I'm showing you. There's two little tabs, one there and one there, and literally you just have to just press them in ever so slightly while you uh, withdraw the uh, key out. So there we go, that's that one out. And we'll just give that a quick test. But like I say, I'm pretty sure that this is um, this is going to show a very low reading. Oops. down to about half an ohm something like that so that key is like I said I said it would be a pretty good key so we will put the um, key that was previously in that shift position there into the shift position which I'm going to use more often which is that one and we'll just push that down so it locks into place Make sure I get the key the right way around. Like that. You can pop that one. Like I said, which was the key that we did repair. Um, so hopefully that one um, should now still be just as good. But like I said, we're using a key which has probably had very little use or a lot less use than that one has in that position. And now it's literally just going to be a case of soldering those two back into position. There we go. And then put the uh, shift keys back on. There we go, that's the shift keys back on. I won't bore you with uh, me reassembling this. What I'll do is I'll quickly put this um, back together and we can um, try it and we'll see if we've made any improvements. So, uh, back in a sec. Okay, we're back over the other side of the office. Um, we'll connect up the A-Kine. I think that's the right one there. Um, plug in some... We'll switch the monitor on. Um, plug in some power. And wait for the monitor to fire up. There we go. And let's see if that's made any difference. So uh, if I press down shift, look at that. So there's no more jamming the key down to um, get the quote marks. That works perfectly. Let's just see if the repaired key works okay. Look at that. Even the repaired key actually works correctly. Yes, I know it's a syntax error. I'm, ju I'm just touching the key there and it's working every time but like I said it was still a good idea to swap that key with the one which hasn't been used as much um, because like I said it's a repair key that could go bad again we could always just swap it out them keys are still available I think they're two or three quid each you know they're not massive amounts of money 
Um, but to be fair, you have two shift keys. Uh, that's the shift key which really, if you're just playing games, loading games and stuff, it's the shift key you're going to use more often. So um, for me, I'm perfectly happy just to do that, just to swap, you know, clean that key up, manage to get it working great. Swap the two shift keys over, and that's problem solved for me. I mean, if you say you couldn't get them keys anymore and you couldn't repair that shift key, you could just swap the two shift keys over and have the good shift key on that side. Um, perhaps you, you'll say both shift keys have, have got bad. There's things like the copy key there, which you're very, very rarely going to use. You could put the best of the two shift keys up there, take the copy key and use that as the shift key for the um, right hand side there. You know, there's lots of ways you can get round these um, you can get round these issues. Right, I'm going to leave it for the, um, this video for that. Um, our next video on the Acorn is going to be um, playing with these, which are the um, my two aftermarket. Now I actually thought this one was an Acorn one and it's not. Uh, this is what's known as a bud. Um, a bud interface uh, and then we have the um, first byte interface which um, I've shown before like I said these are two joystick interfaces for the Acar and Electron um, basically what I, um, I've managed, I managed to find the um, loading tape, the tape that should have come with this one I um, spotted one on eBay, put a bid on it and um, I won it so I'm not going to do that a video until that tape's arrived so we can actually perhaps do some proper decent testing with um, with that one. And we've also got the first byte one that um, I got from Andy. We don't actually have the cassette tape for this one. I've searched and searched and searched online for it and I can't find it. I managed to find the one for the bud um, but I can't get it to work. I've tried, again I've tried and tried. I've tried a couple of different ones I've downloaded. They get halfway through the load and crash but like I said I do have the um, proper tape for that one coming. And this one there is quite a bit of software out there. Some which, a couple of tapes which I've got which actually have the software very much like it was for the Spectrum. They actually have the software um, built into the game. So we can have a play with both. But like I said, that's going to be the next time we um, do a video on the um, Acorn Electron. So I hope you enjoyed that little um, video on sorting the uh, keycap out. Like I said, uh, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.